Well, there we were with Chris Jericho wrestling a handicap match. As you may recall, it's Chris Jericho wrestling Ricky Steamboat, Roddy Piper, and Jimmy Snuka. I'm sure Flair would have been in there had he not lost a retirement match a year prior. Meltzer would say at one point it was scheduled to be a gauntlet match instead of a handicap match. And the first few minutes were terrible because Snuka could barely move. And poor Piper was wearing a tight t-shirt because whatever problem he has with his stomach makes him look like he's 280 pounds. Snuka couldn't do anything, but Piper tried. Jericho eliminated Snuka in three minutes and 40 seconds with the walls of Jericho. He pinned Piper with an enziguri in four minutes and 40 seconds. And then he did a singles match with Steamboat, which had to be a thrill since Steamboat was Jericho's favorite wrestler as a kid. Steamboat looked great for being 56 years old and having not wrestled since 1994. It was probably only sad for people who saw Steamboat in his peak because it was a guy who never got tired and never missed a spot. And well, here he got tired and missed a few spots. Jericho pinned him after a code breaker and then Flair jumps in and starts throwing chops at Jericho, which got the biggest reaction by far of anything on the show up to this point. But Jericho turned the tables on Flair with a backdrop and a code breaker, laying him out. And Jericho then turned his attention to Mickey Rourke, who's sitting ringside with Frank Shamrock. As expected, after much taunting to build it up, Rourke got in the ring. Rourke, who boxed professionally when he was younger, went into a boxing stance and threw a jab. Jericho went into a boxing stance and Rourke threw a left that looked terrible and Jericho went down. Rourke didn't get much of a reaction and people didn't boo the knockout as bad as it looked but they did groan. The Rourke stuff didn't get nearly the post-show media reaction one would have thought. The fact that Rourke never appeared on Raw to build up the feud meant most really didn't care. It ended up backwards because Steamboat and Flair, far more popular than Rourke, were used to set up Rourke's heat, which he didn't have much of. So an excellent breakdown there from Dave Meltzer. Uh, I, for one, didn't think Ricky looked bad at all. I know that Meltzer's picked a hard part, but Think about that, man. He wrestled last in 94. Yeah. And now here it is 15 years later. Goodness gracious. It's not 1989 Conrad. Yes. It's not three flare steamboat, the trilogy that'll never be replicated. That'll never yes. be duplicated or, ex, ex, or, or topped. Uh, but that's how I, I look at that situation. Uh, Jericho should be applauded and lauded for his efforts on this, uh, particular show because Think about this and how the guys do business these days. Uh, those guys probably did less of pre show planning, but when he added Rourke in there, uh, Snooker's limited, uh, Roddy limited, you know, now you're depending on a, a, a veteran, legit veteran and Ricky steamboat to carry the load to get to some weak ass spots with Mickey Rort because he was afraid to do anything. Uh, I, I have a, I'm, I'm very, unbi- I'm, I'm biased as far as this one's concerned, but I'm glad that cause I did the payoffs. I'm glad that, uh, that flair and Roddy, uh, you know, steamboat, of course, all got good paydays and, uh, and Jericho got a good payday now because it's discretionary meaning it's up to the decision of the decision makers. In this case, the ultimate decision maker, we all know is Vince McMahon, but number two on that payroll list was me. So I thought those guys all got good money. Nobody bitched and Lord knows, uh, I've had plenty of conversations with talents about uh, their, their WrestleMania payoffs because some of them believe that they're going to be able to retire off one payday. And that's unless you're stone cold or rock or somebody making a million a night. That ain't too likely. I don't think you can retire off a million dollar payday anyway. Uh, Matt Hardy is going to be wrestling Jeff Hardy here. It's an extreme rules match at WrestleMania 25. They go 13 minutes and 13 seconds. Of course, Jeff is, uh, one of the biggest baby faces WWE ever had, and they're going to push in the video and during commentary that it was actually Matt Hardy who set fire to Jeff's mobile home and killed his dog. Oh, as you may recall, Jeff Hardy had a real life house fire at his home and it burned his home. And unfortunately he lost his dog through that. And that becomes part of the show, which I thought was questionable. Weak is weak. Conrad is weak, weaker, weaker than cat piss. That's weak. 
Meltzer would say Jeff wasn't anywhere close to as over as he'd been before the feud started, even though Jim Ross tried to push it like no rock star before 70,000 fans ever got a bigger reaction. It was very little heat for the match itself. Only pops when they do weapon spots. They set up two ladders side by side. Jeff climbed to the top of an eight footer and then vaulted over the 10 footer next to it. And Matt moved while Jeff crashed on his ass, missing a leg drop. Matt then put Jeff's head inside a chair and used a twist of fate and got the three. The finish looked great. If you're watching with us on YouTube at grillingjr.com, what a visual this is. It got three and a quarter stars. They're doing what they can to get Matt Hardy over as a single star here. Of course, he's mo- best known as a tag team wrestler. Right. But goodness gracious, man. Fans did not want to see this. Like, no. when the reaction for Jeff was not just the mind numbing response you think, it just tells me fans didn't want to see these brothers fight. Did you want to see them fight? I didn't. No, no, I don't. I still don't. I, I, they are, we, you, a great booking is putting talents in the very best position to steal the show or have a, a, a classic type match. The Hardys, when you think of the Hardys, you think of tag teams. Uh, their legacy of the TLC matches with the Dudley's Edge and Christian uh, can't be erased. You can't forget it. It's, it was amazing stuff. So uh, when I think of the Hardys, I think of tag team wrestling in a good way. But uh, I didn't want to see them against each other. I'm not big on that brother versus brother stuff. Now, the Usos may steal the show and kill it this weekend. I don't know. Uh, but it's not something... It doesn't seem totally realistic that two brothers, real brothers would go at it on a stage as large as WrestleMania. Uh, it just, it just didn't work for me. Well, what does work for me, Ray Mysterio pins JBL to win the intercontinental title. We've mentioned that JBL is hurting for certain serious back problems. He's the intercontinental champion. And he's going to drop it to Ray Mysterio here. And it takes all of 21 seconds. JBL attacks Mysterio before the bell demands the bell be sounded. The ref checks with Mysterio to see if he's ready to start the match or call it off. Mysterio says, start it takes over with a drop kick, a six, one, nine, a splash to the floor and the pin. And then after the match, JBL looked at the crowd and said, I quit. That's his retirement. And man, it was quite the perfect send off for this JBL character. Was it not? Yeah. Uh, man, a few words, no doubt about it. Uh, and, and John's just that way. Uh, he's good at sound bites. You know, he was a very underrated broadcaster in my opinion, and uh, could still walk in there again to, tomorrow and do a, a great job. Uh, he's had a good aptitude for communicating good communicator. And, uh, but that's. That, that, that seemed to fit him. I quit. So, but his back just said, no more. We're done. And you can't, that's the big thing that, that fans got to realize most things in wrestling, many things I should say in wrestling end up with a flat back bump time and time again, uh, guys don't land on their face all the time. They land on their back more often than not by far. So when you get a, when you get a back, a back ailment, you know, all of a sudden you got a bad hand dealt to you because how do you get around it? How do you get around? Not taking back, a, you know, bumps, flat back bumps. You really can't. Now, I'm sure there's, well, what about Andre and what about Abdullah and some of these big guys, but they're, they're the exception, the big exception and not the rule. So, uh, anyway. John did what John had to do and he had a great career. He, he was, he over exceeded what I be honest with you. I, 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 we hired him because Jerry Briscoe was high on him. And when Jerry Briscoe was high on somebody, I had no problem endorsing that decision. And so we hired John at, uh, Jerry Briscoe's encouragement and, uh, John far exceeded what many of us thought that he might. I thought he was a, a well-spoken Dick Murdoch. And I even had a talk with him one time about that. So, you know, if I wanted Murdoch, I'd hire him, you know, so cause John had such a, had more distance. He had more range because he could talk so well. One of the best talkers ever in wrestling. 